Okay, welcome back. Now the demo I'm going to do, it's an actual also a problem. It's called distance and time to reach pure rolling motion. So I'm going to take the marker, I'm going to spin it at a certain rate, and then I'm going to drop it to the table. And then the friction force of the table is going to exert a force on it, and eventually it's going to establish pure rolling motion. Okay, so uh, the, the marker is in the shape of a solid cylinder, like this. So you give it an initial uh, spin rate, and then you drop it to the table. Right. So what is happening? When you drop it to the table, the object is only spinning. It's not rolling. Right. It's not translating to the side. Right. All it's doing is spinning like this. The surface, since there is friction, what's going to happen? The contact point between the object and the surface, the contact point is moving that way. For pure rolling motion, when an object rolls, the contact point should not be moving at all. The contact point should be standing still. So what happens, the table, the surface sees the contact point moving to the left and exerts a force on it to the right, the kinetic coefficient of friction, mu k times a normal force. So since the contact point is moving to the left, it's no longer static friction that is establishing pure rolling motion, it's kinetic friction. So this we have here mu k n exerts a force to the right, and then we have the normal force, and then we have mg, right? So what's going to happen? This force that the friction exerts will accelerate the object to the right. So mu k n is equal to m a. So in terms of translational motion, the friction force, the kinetic friction force exerts a force on it to accelerate it in the translational sense. But it fights against the rotation, right? So when an object is rotating this way and I exert a force on the bottom, it will tend to reduce the rotation rate, right? It will tend to reduce it because it's going to exert an opposite torque, right? So the torque is equal to the moment of inertia of the object times alpha. The torque due to the friction force will equal to the, the radius of the uh, marker times the friction force mu kn, right? R times mu kn. So that's going to be R times mu kn times the moment of inertia of the uh, object. So in this case, I'm using solid cylinder, but you can do this with anything. You can get a ball, spin it, put it on the ground. It could be a hollow ball, hollow, uh, hollow cylinder. It could be a solid ball, any shape. So in this case, uh, the moment of inertia for a solid cylinder is half mr squared. Right? And then this one, uh, we can use, uh, since we're on a flat surface, on a horizontal surface, the normal force will just equal mg. So mg, that's equal to half mr squared alpha. And then we have here m and m cancels, right? And then you have here, uh, one of the r's cancels this. And then we have here mu kg is equal to half r alpha, right? Well, what's R alpha? R alpha is the tangential acceleration of the object. So what is the tangential acceleration? It's the, it's the tangential acceleration is this way. In other words, it's the slowing down of the rotational motion of the object, right? So the tangential acceleration will be in this direction, A tangential. Because I my rotation was this way. But friction is on the bottom exerting a force this way, so it's, it will tend to uh, have a tangential acceleration, and that tangential acceleration is a deceleration on the rotational rate, right? So it's going to slow down the rotation. So then what's going to happen? In the translational sense, you're going to pick up velocity, right? The, the center of mass of the object will pick up velocity. So let's set up the equations here. So imagine this is the object. Initially, when you first drop it to the ground, it has no BCM. The center of mass is not moving. So eventually, the center of mass velocity starts picking up over time. So we can say BCM is equal to B initial plus AT. The initial velocity of the center of mass is zero, right? What is the acceleration of the center of mass? It's given by this equation. This is ACM. So the friction force is causing the the center of mass of the object to accelerate to the right. So we can say, what is ACM? Uh, we can uh, solve for it here. Mu k, and then n is mg. 
M A C N M and M cancel. So A C M is going to equal mu K G, right? And then the V C M is going to equal mu K G T, mu K G T. So after some time has passed, uh, the center of mass velocity is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the gravity times the time. Now, how about the tangential velocity? Initially, when you put the object there, it's going at a very rapid tangential velocity, right? V tangential is very, very big. Okay? Uh, so then, what's going to happen to the V tangential? It's going to slow down because of the A tangential. The A tangential is this one, right? The R alpha is the A tangential, and the A tangential is equal to 2 mu kg. But it's actually negative, right? Because it's going to decelerate the V tangential, right? Because I've given it an overspin, right? So this is going to tend to slow it down. So what's the equation for what's going to happen to the V tangential? We could use the same equation. V tangential final equals V tangential initial plus A tangential T. V tangential final... V tangential initial is whatever initial velocity I gave it, right? Uh, so V tangential initial, I gave it some initial velocity, right? And then uh, A tangential is going to be negative 2 mu kg. So it's double the, it's a double, it's double the ACM, right? Here mu kg, A tangential is double that because of the half mr squared, right? Because of the 2 right here. So this, then this is going to equal minus 2 mu k g t, right? So we can say V tangential final, V tangential initial, minus 2 mu k g t. Now, when the V tangential final equals to the V c m final, when they're moving at the same rate, we have established pure rolling motion. So the object will roll nicely, right? At that point, what's going to happen is the V c m and the V tangential will equal each other. And at the contact point, the contact point will move this way with V tangential. And the contact point will move forward at VCM. When this and this are equal, the contact point is stationary. So the object is rolling nicely without the contact point sliding, right? And now after that, static friction force takes over after you've established pure rolling motion. Static friction force takes over and then keeps the rotation going until eventually rolling motion, uh, until eventually the rolling motion dies down because there's something called rolling friction. Rolling friction will eventually slow, slow it down and stop it, right? But if there was no such thing as rolling friction, the static friction could potentially keep it going forever, right? Okay, so then uh, let's solve this now. How do we solve it? Well, when V tangential final equals VCM, which equals mu kgt, right? So we set this equal to mu kgt minus 2 mu kgt, right? So then this negative 2 mu kgt goes over to the left and makes this 3 mu kgt, V tangential initial. So the time it takes to establish pure rolling motion uh, T is equal to uh, V tangential initial over uh, 3 mu kg, right? So it depends on how fast I spun it. If I spun it really fast, it's going to take longer time to establish pure rolling motion. And then uh, depends on also the coefficient of kinetic friction. If the coefficient of kinetic friction is large, then it takes less time to establish pure rolling motion. In my experiment, actually, I can calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction. I can put it over the surface and tilt it until the thing slides down. Then I can take the tangent of that angle. They'll give me the coefficient of kinetic friction. The V tangential initial depends on uh, how, at what rate I spin this thing. If I spin it really fast, uh, it's gonna be larger. So I'm gonna estimate that when I spin it, that the initial angular uh, velocity I'm giving it is about two radians per second. That seems to be reasonable uh, because one radian is about 50, 54 degrees. So two times 50 is about 100. So that means the object covers 100 degrees per second. So every second it uh, rotates uh, 100 degrees. So that would be reasonable rotation I can give it. And then the V tangential initial will equal to the radius of the marker 
times the omega initial. So let's measure the diameter of the marker. That's going to be 1.8 centimeters is the diameter of the marker. So the radius is 0.9 centimeters. So the radius is 0.9 centimeters. So in terms of uh, meters, that's going to be what? 0.9 centimeter. So it's going to be 0 0.009 meter. That's the radius of the, uh, the marker. Then if I assume that I'm spinning it at 2 rads per second, then I multiply that by 2. That's going to give me 0 0.018 meters per second. That's my B tangential initial. Then I'm going to multiply, uh, divide that, 0 0.018 divided by 3. Then I can calculate the mu K, 9.8. So what is the mu k going to be? I'm going to put my marker on the surface. Slides. Okay. So the angle is about 15 degrees. I did this kind of quickly. I just determined what angle I need for it to slide down at constant speed, right? So that gave me the coefficient of kinetic friction, an approximate value for it. So we have here mu k. It's the, the tangent of the angle it needs for the object to slide down at constant speed. So we have here tangent of 15 degrees. Okay. So basically like 2 milliseconds. Right away it's going to establish pure rolling motion. Well, of course, that depends on B tangential initial. If I give it a much faster spin, maybe 3 rads per second, 4 rads per second, 5 rads per second, then this time will be longer and longer, right? So then what distance will it cover? How far will the marker go until this happens? So we can use the equation, distance is equal to V initial T plus half A T squared. Remember that the initial velocity, the center of mass velocity was zero. So then we can say A C M T squared. So then what is my A C M? Equal to M A A C M and then mu kmg is equal to macm, the m and the m cancel, acm is mu kg, right? So then you multiply uh, the coefficient of kinetic uh, friction, 0.26 times 9.8, that gives you acm, right? right? Then you can say, okay, the time, the distance that it travels is half the acceleration times the time squared, okay? Right, which is going to be uh, what, uh, 0 0.007 millimeters. So that means the rate of velocity that I gave it, uh, the 0 0.018 meters per second, was too small, right? In other words, I should be able to spin the marker more than two rads per second, maybe 10 rads per second, maybe more, a lot more, right? So let's actually perform the experiment, see what happens. Drop the marker here, I spin it, but immediately it reaches pure rolling motion. See how it moves forward? The thing that's making it go forward is the uh, kinetic friction, but eventually stopping because of rolling friction, okay? Because now, now I gave it a quite a bit of spin. See, but you can tell the distance that it achieves pure rolling motion is from here to here, like very quick. See, so immediately it reaches pure rolling motion. Let's assume that I can actually spin it 10 times faster. Let's see how that will change the results. Let's say I can spin this 20 radians per second, which is quite fast, right? How will that change the answers? Well, then the velocity tangential initial will be uh, 0.18, because the, the, the thing is that the radius of the marker is itself small. So even if I spin it fast, the initial velocity that I give it is still small. So then what's going to happen? The time, instead of being 0 0.0023 sec, uh, 235 seconds, it'll be 0 0.0235 seconds, so it'll be 23 milliseconds. This is probably a little bit more reasonable, 23 milliseconds. Then when you put it here, what will happen? It'll come up 0 0.0235 squared, right? So then the distance is going to be a bit bigger, okay? So it'll be 7 millimeters. Well, when I do it, Within about a, mil a millimeter, two millimeters, three millimeters, it has achieved uh, already pure rolling motion. So immediately it has achieved pure rolling motion. So this is probably a bit more realistic result, okay? So you can see here with this 
uh, demonstration, a really good demo about rolling motion, pure rolling motion. Most of the problems we do in physics are we're considering that the object has pure rolling motion already. But in this kind of a case where I over-rotate it, it starts out with only rotation, but then the kinetic friction establishes pure rolling motion and moves the object forward, right? This is what will happen uh, if you are stuck in snow, right? Imagine there's a car whose uh, tires are just turning, right? You happen to be stuck in sand, mud, really mu uh, wet mud or snow. How do you fix that issue? You put a plank of wood in the bottom of the tires and the friction force between the wood and uh, uh, the, the tires pushes it forward just like the marker and then allows the car to go forward. So the friction force, the kinetic friction force between the wood and the tires is what helps establish pure rolling motion and pushes the car forward. Well, the same thing is happening to this problem, right? It's pushing the marker forward and helping the marker to get out of the mud, okay? So you can see a pretty good problem in how to do the physics of that. Thank you very much.